So in the last video, we created a page. We added a navigation bar and talked about some of the features within navigation. And we created two content areas, one that sort of goes across several columns um, and one that goes across three columns. And we made some adjustments into our custom CSS. So we were just getting started. If I go back to um, the Bootstrap site and look at some more examples, if I wanted to get another type of a column, here I see this one that's two columns, one that's eight units wide and one that's four units wide. Maybe I want to grab something like that for my third row. So I can come in here and find the one that says two columns that uh, has the eight and the four. And I'll just grab that information. Again, you would change the content here, but the main thing is that we want to get a new row. So I'll copy that and paste that into our code below the one that we just did, still within that main container, and we'll save that. And we'll look at that on the page. And now we have a third row that we can put any kind of content we want in here in the eight unit wide column and the four unit wide column. This might be good for some about information about your site and the four unit column is good to put something like a Twitter widget in it. So hopefully you're starting to see that the way Bootstrap is set up is that there are numerous components that you can grab and you can use and you can put into your site that allow you to take what you want and not use what you don't want. So when you go to the site and you're looking at some of the examples, perhaps in this bootstrap theme here, and you're like, wow, those buttons look cool. I really want to use one of these default buttons, or I want to grab a table and I want it to look like this with the striping on it. You can go into the code by viewing the source and finding exactly the element that you want to use. So for example, let's come down here and find where they have tables. Here's some tables that they have. Um, here's like a basic table but they have several others. Here's one of the table striped uh, tables. So I'm just gonna take this whole table. It's already in a div here, a six unit div. I'm gonna put it in one of our divs. So I'm gonna copy that. And I've just basically got the table from opening to closing. And I will put that in the one down here that's eight wide. So I'm gonna get rid of that content, put a little space here between it, the opening and closing. So we're gonna be in that column. We're gonna add this title, I'm sorry, we're gonna add this table. And if we come back over here and refresh our page, we should see the table now in that eight column wide uh, area. And it's also responsive. And if we go back to the code where we were looking at the table, again, they're showing us several different kinds of tables here. Here's the table bordered. All we have to do is change where it says table striped to table bordered, and we get the way, the, the different way that it presents. So again, another thing that you can just grab. Um, up here, like for buttons, maybe we want some sort of a button that goes with each one that says view more. And you can get default colors, or you can get um, all these different kinds of colors here. So going back to viewing the source, the buttons were above the table, and they're all in different sizes. So here um, is button large, um, regular button sizes, and then they have small and extra small. So let's just say we'll go with the regular button size. We want the default version. So I'm gonna grab that. And maybe we want one of those in each of our divs up here with the three. If we go back to our page, I'll show you what it, what, where it would go on the page. So we have these three where it's bands, venues, music sites. I'd probably add more content there with a description and then view more below that. And so I can come over here and find where I have this uh, right here. And maybe within that div or you know maybe right below it, I would maybe have this be an H1. Let's make it an H2. And then still within that div, but right below it, I'll put one of these default buttons, but I'll have it say view more. And let's see if that worked. Get to hours and refresh. And we have a nice view more button. And uh, what we'd have to do to make that work 
is add the um, ahref content around that button to make it an actual button that goes somewhere that actually um, has a link associated with it. But you can start to see how this works and how you can plug and play the things that you want to use on the site that Bootstrap has already created for you. It just gives, it just makes everything a little bit easier because many of the things that you would use over and over again in a website are available for you. Here's a drop down menu. If we wanted to add a drop down to our site, it's very easy to do that. Um, this one already has it up here at the top. So when we view the source, we can actually see it in action right here. One of the list items after contact is this drop down. So we would just get this list item and it really is just a list inside of a list. So with this drop down from this LI inclusive of this um, unordered list within it and this LI right here, but still within the main LI that we already have for our navigation. So you have to pay careful attention to that. I'm going to copy and paste this into our regular navigation. And that would go right below here. So again, it's a new list item with a list inside of a list. And we'll save this and come back to our page and refresh. And now we have a drop down that functions automatically because we already have the uh, JavaScript file attached to it. And you can see that when we collapse it down, it's already there. So we have the ability to um, add that and have it be controlled by the um, uh, responsive as well as the desktop versions. So it's really good to go through and see what your options are and just make a note like I like that. I want to use that. I don't need that. I need a panel like this um, and I can add those into my site. So back on the bootstrap getting started page, I encourage you to look through the starter template um, under using the framework look at navbars in action and look at these custom components to see the kind of things that you might want to be able to put into your site. Also, if you go to the components page, there are many, many examples. We talked a little bit about these glyph icons and how you would add those. Each page gives you instructions of how to use and an example. Here's more about drop downs, alignment, headers, button groups, I mean, it goes on and on forever. And you can see on the side here, it has the list of things that are the different components and it will jump you if we wanted to learn more about the Jumbotron and go ahead and get that component. It gives you the information about that here. So take a look at all those, take in everything that you can possibly do with Bootstrap, but don't worry, don't, you don't have to get too crazy with any of these features. Just take your time, look at the design that you created, that you've sketched, and then try to match your sketch with some of the components in Bootstrap. So let's go back now to the site that I gave you. I'm going to open the practice Bootstrap folder, which mirrors the one that I called Bootstrap template for you. And I'll open that index page. So I'm going to close this one that we've been working on, just so we don't get confused. And I'll close this custom CSS. So this page has a lot of the same elements that we've been talking about with just a few more features put on it. And if I bring it up in the browser, you'll be able to see how it looked like when I, how it looked when I started. So we've got the inverse navigation. It's got an example of a drop down for you. It's got a jumbotron with a uh, background and it's got one row that has a very large section. It has another row that has three columns and I've got some offset spacing between them and you'll see that in the HTML. And then another row that has a sort of large two thirds uh, sized uh, versus a, a smaller one right next to it that you could put maybe a social media widget and it also has a footer. And that corresponds to what we have in the code. Here's where we have introduced our nav bar and it's inversed and it's fixed at the top. And you can see that that is fixed because as I scroll, the navbar stays at the top, even though everything is scrolling beyond it. And then it has um, below the navbar several different sections. So in here, I have a jumbotron that creates that sort of large uh, space on the site. And then I have several different sections and I established sections for each row so that I could give them each an ID and control each one separately in my style sheet. 
So section one, I've called intro, section two, I've called home, and section three, I've called about. You can call these anything that you want. Each one has uh, columns in it. So uh, the first one is one large column with an offset. The second one is uh, three columns, and the third one is two columns. And you can change the content in here, and you can change the buttons and how they look based on everything you now know from Bootstrap. Um, but the main thing is if we go into the custom CSS I created for this particular site, we can see how I'm using these divs uh, for the sections with the special IDs for intro and home and about. So if we just look at intro very quickly, we see that the intro section does not have a background image. It has a background color, and that corresponds to this top one here, not the Jumbotron, but this one, it has a solid color background. I have a few other things in here in terms of padding. The width is obviously a percentage. And I've got some things about the container to make this area have the white background that it's inserted in, but any of those things can be changed. It has rounded corners, etc. When we get to home, however, that uh, section with the ID of home has a background image. And I just happened to use one from Austin City Limits Fe Festival, and it's presenting here. And it's got a fixed background. And we'll talk more about doing things with backgrounds in a moment. And so I just have a few different things that control how things look within it, and you have control over changing those. So I have corresponding IDs for each of those areas, and then just a few things that style the footer. Those are the only things that um, I have modified, that I've customized so far. Uh, this here uh, is sort of a wild card for all the columns on the page. Anything that has call dash on the page, I wanted the background to be white, and so I just wanted to do that um, for all the columns that are in the home uh, div. And so that's what that does there. Um, that can be taken out. And I really encourage you to take things out, add things, and work with them as you are working with Bootstrap. In the next video, we'll talk about adding a carousel uh, with images to scroll through images for your project. And then we'll talk about some other really neat components that you can add to your Bootstrap site.